Hello and a very warm welcome to the Superstars Open, celebrating 20 years of the Euro Formula Open with a three-race all-star event to crown the Superstar Open champion. So we're racing at Silverstone, the circuits Barcelona, Catalonia and Monza. And it is all for a good cause, raising money for the Red Cross coronavirus response. The drivers all equipped with the new for 2020 Delara 320 and a chance to put that car through its paces at some of the three finest circuits that we've enjoyed over the years of the Euro Formula Open. It's Roberto Mehi who takes pole position alongside 2017 champion Harrison Scott. Then Ferdinand Habsburg and Bruno Mendes on the second row from Bentvi Skull. Felipe Drugovic, another runaway champion, then Yu Kanemaru and Andy Suchek completing the fourth row of the grid. The top 10 rounded out by Alex Fontana and Thiago Vivacqua ahead of Roldan Rodriguez and German Sanchez in 12th position. The grid set from hot laps over the preceding days within Juan Cáceres and Lucas Donner on row 7 from Tatiana Calderon and David Fuminelli in 16th place. They've got a 20-minute race to look forward to around the home of the British Grand Prix circuit. So the cars lined up on the grid, ready for their formation lap, a chance to get themselves acquainted to the Silverstone track. And it is Roberto Mehi who leads away from that pole position, heading in towards Abbey, starting from the wing complex, which is where the Formula 1 cars start. And then tipping through the midsection, or the opening sector of the lap, rather. So through Abbey Farm onto Village and the Loop before the blast down the Wellington Strait and on towards Brooklands. To Roberto Mehi, one of several Euro Formula Open graduates who's made it all the way to Formula One, competing with the Manor team and also very accomplished competitor in various other single seats championships and the World Endurance Championship. Harrison Scott, then the runaway champion in 2017, whereas Ferdinand Habsburg and Leonardo Polcini, the years previously, having a superb scrap for the crown as well, particularly the battle between Habsburg and Polcini around the Monza circuit. Fifth on the grid, Benfi Skull, a driver who has enjoyed great success here at Silverstone, scoring a victory back in 2018. But it was the man who starts sixth, Felipe Drugovic, who was the runaway champion that season. It's a chance to look in cart from Mehi as he heads through Cops Corner on towards Maggots and Beckett's. In the midfield as well. Looks like that's the car of Felipe Drugovic. Just getting a little bit of heat into the Michelin tyre. And of course, all these drivers very successful in the real world their 2020 plans somewhat delayed and on hiatus as a result of coronavirus but this an opportunity to not only support the Red Cross response to the pandemic but also to get a little bit of racing action in as well so Stowe Corner always one of the key overtaking opportunities around Silverstone Court Mayor he brings the field back into club and veil before lining up on the grid 11 laps then it's going to be roughly 20 minutes worth of racing the start of course will be all important as will staying out of trouble avoiding contact picking up any damage to the car which will then hamper chances through the remainder of the race so the cars returning to the grid Drivers then getting ready for the start as everybody files into position. So Roberto Mehi there in the white and blue car in pole position. Watch for the grey, orange and, so and black car of Harrison Scott. So everybody waiting for the signal to get underway. The first of the Superstars Open races. Green flag is waved. Everybody's in position. Red light's on now. Waiting for lights flash out. And away we go. And who gets the jump from the line? Oh, there's a little bit of contact further back. Quite a bit of contact. In fact, one or two of the tail ends in real trouble as Harrison Scott and Roberto Mehi go nose to tail 
through Abbey, on through Farman. Scott draws alongside May, looks to challenge the lead. Heavy braking into Village. It's Mehi, though, who gets his nose just in front. Or does he? As they slew, slide out of the corner, it's Harrison Scott who takes the early advantage. Benfi Skull moves up into third position as he does battle with Ferdinand Hampsburg, but it's Scott who's got the advantage. So they head on to the Wellington Strait for the first time. Roberto Mehi right in the slipstream behind Scott who defends that inside line into the breaking zone at Brooklyn. Mayer, he looks for the outside track and goes wheel to wheel with Harrison Scott, who just edges out. May a little bit of contact, but it's Scott who retains the advantage. Habsburg pushed wide as a result of all of that, and that enables Felipe Drugovic to possibly move up into contention. Bentley Scarl as well, a beneficiary. He goes into second place. As Here's another look at it. As Mayer, he pulled to the outside of Harrison Scott, Scott, that inside line just moved across into lock wheels with Roberto Mehi. Then you see as Mehi rejoined, that pushes Habsburg out to the grass and it enables the car of Benfi Skull to move through into second position. Oh, a little bit more bumping and barging and a spin and all more trouble. And a couple of cars taken out coming through Brooklands. Hopefully they'll rejoin without any drama as there is Harrison Scott, the race leader, as behind in second position. Benfi Skull, Roberto Mehi doing battle. Felipe Drugovic then in fourth, clear of Andy Suchek and Bruno Mendes. And there you see the car of Suchek with the red nose coat. He's got Mendes and now Ferdinand Habsburg just in behind. And Habsburg, who went well in the hot lap qualifying session, delayed, of course, through that early instant. As through to complete the lap goes Harrison Scott, his lead just one and a half seconds. Over the Skull and Mehi, some brilliant battling going on a little bit further down the order. And that is Alex Fontana, who appears to have a bit of a train beginning to form up around him. The Euro Formula Open, of course, has always been characterised by close wheel-to-reel racing on track. And so it's proving to be the case in the esports environment as well. So down the Wellington Strait once more towards the heavy braking zone into Brooklands. In the background, Lucas Dunner looking to make a little bit of progress as he does battle with David Fuminelli, German Sanchez. So around Luffield they go. Sprinting through Woodcut past the old pits complex. It's where the Eurofall Open cars started their races in real life as Habsburg from Mendes great battle this for 6th and 7th position Alex Fontana then in the yellow car in 8th just behind them with Roldan Rodriguez the white car the black helmet tucked in behind as well through Maggots and Beckett's then before the blast out on the winter straight oh a little bit of an error there from Mendes he slithers slightly wide and that's going to give Habsburg a little bit of an advantage as they run down the hangar straight for jumping on the brakes into the right-hand sweep of Stowe Corner in car with Roberto Mehi in pursuit of Ben Skull. Heavily on the brakes into the Vale. And then around Club, just trying to get into the toe behind Viscal. So they reel off the second lap of the race. And Harrison Scott setting a new fastest lap into the bargain, as perhaps you'd expect. And this is what Scott did to devastating effect during his championship winning year. Good starts to the race and building the buffer early on. Looking back from the car of his skull, he has got Roberto Mehi tucked up behind him. Then a little bit of daylight back to Andy Suchek and Felipe Drugovic. On down the Wellington Strait then. See the advantage that Scott has got. Felipe Drugovic, meanwhile, has got all sorts of bother. That's Ferdinand Habsburg, who was right behind him and looking to challenge for the position. And we'll see how that's all sorted out. And it's Habsburg, who has been the big beneficiary, who moves up into fourth place. Brilliant move from Ferdinand Habsburg then. As he climbs up to fourth, Suchek drops to fifth. Felipe Drugovic into sixth. And then about a second or so back to Bruno Mendes in seventh. And this is... Battling a little bit further down the order. Oh, a little bit of contact. And a quick spin. Shouldn't have caused too much of a delay. We'll pick out who that is in a moment's time. They lose a slew of places. Also, that's Wayne Kakarev will 
see as all oh, out running very, very wide. And I fear that that was Bruno Mendes who went flying off. Indeed, it was. And Mendes into the barrier as they came onto the way down the hangar straight. So he drops right to the back of the order. And a disaster for Mendes as running a little bit wide there, Ferdinand Habsburg. Good battle going on behind between Andy Suchek and Felipe Drugovic. This is for fourth, fifth and sixth position. And it's Felipe Drugovic who's possibly looking like the most upwardly mobile at the moment as he is tucked up under the rear spoiler of the car of Suchek as they swing into Abbey and then through Farm. In car with Felipe Drugovic. Just tiny bit off the apex as he turns into the loop now the run down the Wellington straight is all important and a big correction there for Drugovic and that's going to cost him no chance to draw up behind and pass Andy Suchek on this occasion unless of course Suchek were to make an error so under the bridge they go into the breaking zone of Brooklands now what can Felipe Drugovic do about gaining the ground the advantage for him here is that this man Ferdinand Habsburg has now got his mirrors full of Andy Suchek and if they start battling and slow themselves down that is going to play Felipe Drugovic back into the mix so through Woodcut they come looking back from the tail of Habsburg's car the DTM racer with former FA Formula 2 champion Andy Suchek running right behind him and then Felipe Drugovic can see in the back of the shot as well through Maggots and into Beckett's And out of Chapel Curve, running very wide there, Andy Suchek. Now, is that going to open up a window of opportunity to Felipe Drugovic? Suchek would have been able to keep his foot pretty much planted on that occasion. And so, Felipe Drugovic not able to do too much now. All the while, as we were looking back from Ferdinand Habsburg, he has been looking forward and has been closing up onto the tail of Andy Su of Roberto Merhi, rather. Roberto Merhi's third position is now in a little bit of dispute. Ferdinand Habsburg... And he's bringing Suchek and Drugovic with him for company. They've now got a good couple of seconds advantage over Alex Fontana, who went on to race in the Formula E Championship, amongst other things, upon his graduation from the Euro Formula Open. And Fontana has built a little bit of a buffer over Thiago Vivacqua, who is busy battling with German Sanchez and David Fuminelli. Lucas Dunn and Roldan Rodriguez also part of that scrap. As out of the loop. And on to the Wellington straight once more. And this fight for third, building nicely in the front of the picture. You can see Harrison Scott and Benfi Skull rather building the buffer over the rest of the field as we are rapidly approaching half distance here in Silverstone. And Roberto Mehi coming under real pressure now from Ferdinand Habsburg around Luffield, the never-ending right hand at the corner. Just feels like it lasts an absolute eternity. And then Woodcut with... Mehi now having to work very hard to keep Habsburg behind him, but Habsburg's got a good line into Cop's corner and he's going to go through. Lovely move from Ferdinand Habsburg. Perfect pass, really. Roberto Mehi looks to try and dispute the matter heading into Beckett's. He's not going to get much joy there. Feeding through Maggots. That's where the turbulent wake of the car in front will affect the handling a little bit. And you can see that Mehi dips a little bit adrift of Habsburg, kicks out the tail slightly, and has now got Andy Suchek beginning to home in on to his tail as well so on to the hangar straight the run down towards Stowe corner and Habsburg up into third position but he's now got a bit of a big ask up to Bentley Skull the best part of three seconds there is Viscal Habsburg the black car the predominantly white car of Roberto May behind him the red and white car of Andy Suchek just in behind and then Felipe Drugovic as well and fastest lap of the race, now going the way of Bent v. Skull. He's within one and a half seconds of Harrison Scott. There is the Dutchman, who has always gone well around Silverstone. Back in 2018, the Silverstone round run of the few occasions that he was able to beat Felipe Drugovic. And there, indeed, is the 2018 champion Drugovic, who once more is getting very close to Andy Suchek and Roberto May as they head towards Brooklands. This we've seen already, one of the prime overtaking opportunities on the lap, but nobody quite close enough to challenge this time around. And of course, you don't want to risk a lunge unnecessarily, damage the car and the like. So Felipe Drugovic 
settling in for the time being. Some good battles going on elsewhere through the field as well. That's Thiago Vivacqua, Herman Sanchez and David Fuminelli all doing battle. In car then with Sanchez as he chases down Thiago Vivacqua heading into Cops Corner. Really satisfying part of the circuit. The drivers are a little bit out onto the AstroTurf and the exit there. That will just make things a little bit slippery. Into Maggots and Beckett. Down a couple of gears and then picking up the pace out of Chapel Curve on to the hangar straight. At the moment, Vivacqua has got enough. It would seem over Sanchez, who's got Fuminelli filling his mirrors. Then Roldan Rodriguez and Lucas Dunner in the background having a good scrap. And Roldan Rodriguez possibly about to make the move on Lucas Dunner. Wherever you look, there are battles going on. And here is Felipe Drugovic, who has made the pass on Andy Suchek. So Felipe Drugovic goes fifth. Here is what happened in the slipstream. Down the hangar straight towards Stowe Corner. Drugovic bursts out of the bubble to the inside line. Not an awful lot as a result. Unfortunately for Andy Suchek, he could do about that. Drugovic ran wide, didn't break traction, and slotted back in to that fifth position. Meanwhile, the fighting continues throughout the field. All very close on the brakes. That is the battle between Roldan Rodriguez and Lucas Dunn. All a little bit sideways in front as well from David Fuminelli. And it's Lucas Dunn who's just got the advantage over Rodriguez. Juan Catarez looking to join that fight as well. And Dunn are having to defend a little bit. I'm not sure that's going to quite be enough to... S oh, and problems in front. And who was that who was in trouble? A big spin. It's German Sanchez who was the car that instigated the contact as Bruno Mendes has just set the fastest lap of the race. And so Sanchez in real trouble. I think Roldan Rodriguez was possibly the other driver who lost out a little bit from that. Lucas Dunner continues on his way. The momentary lapse of concentration and it all goes sideways. Fortunately, none of them, well, I was about to say none of them in too much trouble but you can see spinning around wildly in the background is German Sanchez so his run at the front of the field is very emphatically to an end. Juan Catherez was possibly one of the winners of that as was Yu Kanemaru who is hustling behind Roldan Rodriguez looking to regain a little bit of ground just bring up to speed as we're watching this battle just outside the top 10. Harrison Scott still leads the way, just shy of 1.7 seconds clear of Vizcal with Ferdinand Habsburg having passed Roberto Mejie, building out about a second's buffer. As Thiago Vivacqua continues on his way. Now in something of splendid isolation, he is three or so seconds back from Alex Fontana. You caught a glimpse of there. He's got a three second or so buffer over David Fuminelli. And so that is looking reasonably good for eighth position at the moment. A fair bit of ground to try and chase down to Fontana. Thiago Vivacqua picks his way through Brooklyn. We return to the fight between Roberto Mejia. No, we don't. We have a look at Roldan Rodriguez in the white car. Busy defending. And hopefully not getting into too much trouble. He's going to be chased down the Wellington Strait, I'd imagine. And that looks like it's going to be a position. Again, textbook stuff, just a little bit slower onto Wellington Strait from Rodriguez. Nothing he can do to defend the line into Brooklands. So he slips down the order. And Yukanamaru gaining the place, going 12th as an advance as a, as a result. Japanese driver Yukanamaru, who raced with Emilio de Vlotta Motorsport in the Euro Formula Open and then made the graduation up to the Formula Renault three and a half litre championship as Lucas Dunnett busy defending as well from Juan Catherine in the foreground. Catherine looking to the outside into Stowe. Brilliant move. Around the outside, closed the door with great effect. Here, meanwhile, is the race leader, Harrison Scott. And Scott's advantage over Bent V. Skull is still just 
1.6 seconds. They're onto the Solidarity lap, and that is going to pay championship points. The best lap for the drivers on this tour of the circuit. So we have got the three races all looking to combine to give us the Superstars Open champion. 30 points for the race victory. Three points, I believe, for the Solidarity lap. Five points for pole position. So outright speed and consistency is going to be the key here for Harrison Scott though Viscal just inching ever closer just about one and a half seconds back they don't think it's really going to cause too many problems here for uh, Scott with uh, then Ferdinand Habsburg in third he's got Roberto Merhi just behind him Bruno Mendes another fast lap of the race for him now Mendes of course if you recall had that monster moment uh, chapel curve earlier in the race so he has had the benefit of more or less clear track with which to set about setting some quick lap times so there's Habsburg in third behind him Mehi in fourth Felipe Drogovic in fifth sixth place to Andy Suchek who's rather dropped away a little bit from this battle and then in seventh place Alex Fontana from Vivacqua from Nelly and Catherine to complete the top 10 as we head towards the latter stages of the race as well. And Harrison Scott blasting through. Another lap reeled off. Now, Ben Viscal is staying with Scott. And certainly, if Harrison Scott were to make an error at any point, then this would get very, very interesting in terms of the fight for the lead because the sort of buffer that Scott has got, it's comfortable if he's able to keep lapping at a good pace. It's not comfortable if... He were to make an error. Viscal just shy of 1.6 seconds back. Meanwhile, Felipe Drugovic is right up with Roberto Mehi and is making a late push here for a place on the podium. That's what he's going to be aiming for. As firstly, he needs to clear Mehi. Then he needs to make a way past Habsburg and Drugovic to the inside line of Roberto Mehi. Moves through into fourth place. Great move from Felipe Drugovic. Again, Roberto Mehi, by the time that Drugovic was up with him, couldn't really close the door and has a little slide of the tail of his car as well. Just getting on the power as early as he dares through Luffield as they sprint through Woodcock on towards Cops Corner. A pair of them tipping through, nose to tail. And then out of Cops on towards maggots once more and then through Beckett's oh a little bit of a wobble again from Roberto Mehi just the front of the car breaking traction so much turbulent air through maggots and Beckett's onto the hangar straight though and Felipe Drugovic he knows that Mehi is there but just sticking to the racing line in towards Stowe Corner in real life they'd have crossed over the county boundaries between Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire at this point on the lap as Harrison Scott heads through club along the starting grid and into the 11th lap of the race. So Harrison Scott has had to work very hard in the early stages to take the lead of the race. Thereafter, he has just been able to control things very nicely indeed. Harrison, who was propelled from the Eurofilm Open over to the, the Road to Indy series in the US, the, the Pro Mazda Championship. He's involved in a very spectacular accident in Toronto alongside showing some great pace in his time stateside as Ferdinand Habsburg with Felipe Drugovic just behind him. And Roberto Mayer, he's still in the mix. But Habsburg, for now, just seems to have got enough in hand, I would suggest, to make that third place reasonably safe. Likewise, Harrison Scott over the course of the last lap has been able to build out a tenth or two over Bentvi Scal. It's just enough to make it that little bit more comfortable for Scott, but also to hammer the point home to Viscal that he can keep trying, but Scott's got just a little bit in reserve if he needs it. So out of Beckett's through Chapel Curve onto the hangar straight for Harrison Scott running in the groove of the track all the way down towards Stowe Corner. Gets on the brakes, down through the gears. Stowe was tightened a little bit in 1991. It's no longer quite as quick as it used to be. 
but it's still an imposing corner. On the brakes then for Scott as he picks his way through club and accelerates out of the final corner. And Harrison Scott accelerating through them and across the line to Scott. He scarred through in second position. And that is the race. Victory then to Scott. Second to be Skull. And then Roberto Mehi from Felipe Drugovic and Andy Suchek. Really exciting the late stages. Now here is a look. Late on, Mehi and Drugovic and Roberto Mehi challenging Felipe Drugovic as they went through Stowe. Drugovic then defending hard into club. Mehi, though, looking to the outside. That gave him the inside line. Elbow Felipe Drugovic out of the way and sideways from Felipe Drugovic. And that is why for Roberto Mehi, he was able to come home in fourth. And why Suchek was so close to Drugovic at the line. But it's victory to Harrison Scott. He takes the win from Viscal with Ferdinand Habsburg in third, Mehi fourth, Felipe Drugovic fifth, Andy Suchek in sixth, Malik Fontana, Thiago Vivacqua, David Fuminelli, Wang Cathred completing the top ten. Yukan Amaru, Lucas Dunner, and Roldan Rodriguez, plenty of adventures for them. Tatiana Calderon in 14th, from Bruno Mendes in 15th, German Sanchez completing the field. So, in terms of the early standings, that gives Harrison Scott the advantage. 33 points clear of Bentley Skull. Ferdinand Hamsburg tied on 27 apiece. Roberto Mehi then in fourth from Drugovic, Shuchek, Fontana and Vivacqua. Thrilling start then to the Superstars Open and plenty more to come with the next stop being the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. Hi Harrison, can you hear me? It's Ben. Hello, Ben. Familiar voice, I can't. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, good, good, thanks. So, first race of the Superstars Open and, and a home victory of sorts. And uh, it was much like your real life racing. You got in the lead early on and then, then drove away from everybody. Yeah, no, um, yeah, kind of bring back a lot of memories back in 2017. Obviously, in that season, I had a very strong car, strong team, and um, we kind of dominated proceedings really and yeah as he made a good start got past Roberto on the first lap and um yeah managed to make a nice gap in the in the opening couple of laps to Bent which was he broke, broke the slipstream um and from then it was just managing the race yeah well talk us through those early moves because it it looked pretty hairy very very close wheel to wheel yes yeah, so I think Roberto locked up into turn two um which obviously gave me gave me a room to slide up the inside um, and then obviously going then down the back straight into Brooklyn. So he had a, a big run, run in the slipstream. Um, and obviously he went to the outside, which which isn't the best place to be. So I just kind of obviously held, held my race in line. And once he kind of dropped two wheels off, I knew then that, um, yeah, I could just get my head down and just start putting the laps in. And then towards that stage of the race, as Bent was closing to about one and a half seconds with you, were you under pressure or were you just trying to, to manage the car, manage the gaps? Yeah, just trying to manage manage the car, manage the gaps. Um, it's very new software to me, so actually knowing what's going to happen in, in the end of the race like that is is difficult. So I was just, yeah, just managing the gap. Um, didn't want to throw too much risk at it and obviously risk um, losing the car. So no, I was just really happy with it. So maximum points haul and two races to go. How do you think you're going to go around Catalina and Monza? Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, in both qualifiers for these next tracks, I'm I'm up at the sharp end, so a little bit further back at Barcelona than where I'd like to be and where my pace is really. But um, yeah, as long as I can get a clean start, avoid any messes in the in the first couple of laps, um, yeah, I, sh I should be okay. Excellent. Well, winner of race one in Superstars Open, Harrison Scott. Very best of luck for the rest of the series. Thank you. So after victory in race one for Harrison Scott, who will be successful in the second Superstars Open race around the circuit to Barcelona, Catalunya, which has long been one of the favourite events of the season 
of the Euro Formula Open and a track that the drivers know very well from racing and testing. It's a circuit where overtaking can be tricky. Getting set up of the car right is all important, as is nice, smooth, clean and precise driving. So it should be another tense and exciting race. From the hot laps, it was Roberto Mehi who emerged in pole position from Ferdinand Habsburg with Felipe Drugovic and race one winner Harrison Scott on row two. Row three, Yu Kanamaru from Andy Suchek, then Bruno Mendes and Juan Cathered with the rest of the top ten being rounded out by German Sanchez and Thiago Vivacqua. Then Tatiana Calder on 11th from Alex Fontana, one of several drivers in the thick of the action in race one in 12th. David Fuminelli then from Roldan Rodriguez and Lucas Dunner to round out the field. So the Barcelona circuit, an ever-present for the Euro Formula Open over the years, completed in 1991 as the field headed by Roberto Mejia set off on their formation lap accelerating along the start and finish straight and down towards the opening sequence of turns Lucas Dunner there towards the tail of the field Ferdinand Habsburg in the black car the colours in which he raced of course in the Eurofilm Open of the, the Drive X team Head of the two RP Motorsport liveried cars of Felipe Drugovic and Harrison Scott. Teammates of sorts for the purposes of today, but racing in the championship in successive years. But actually in 2017, Felipe Drugovic taking over Scott's vacant seat in Barcelona and having a sensational debut weekend. For Roberto May, we have to go back a long time to his successes in the Euro Formula Open. Back to 2000 and eight before he moved on to bigger and better things unless he has fond memories of his time in the championship field heading through turns six and seven before heading on uphill and out of the the very fast run at turn nine down towards the heavy braking zone at turn 10 always one of the most exciting sections of the track the heavy braking into turn 10 an opportunity to overtake there for then the tight and technical final sector of the lap running through essentially a stadium section great vantage points for spectators here overlooking the panorama of much of the track they then head through the chicane that is the best part of 20 years ago to moderate speed and then out of the final turn before taking their place on the starting grid. This time, it is 14 laps to look forward to for the drivers as they begin to move into grid position. A little bit of weaving around at the back of the field. They will be hoping for a clean start this time round. Harrison Scott will be hoping for another good finish to build on his points haul from race one, but it was very close from others in terms of the points. So everybody more or less in two position now, looking for the green flag to be shown to the drivers. That means that we will be about to get underway any moment as the red lights come on. When the lights flash out, we'll be racing. And away we go. Who gets the jump off lights? A good start from Roberto Mehi. Oh, and more contact behind. And that's a real pity. Somebody has been spun around. I think it's German Sanchez in trouble, possibly Fuminelli, with whom he collided. It was Roberto Mehi, the white car, has got an armada trying to challenge him into the opening complex. It's Felipe Drugovic, who's the winner of that. He emerges in second. as behind a spin from Ferdinand Habsburg. He's taken a couple of others for company with him as well. We'll pick out who that was in a moment as they swing through turn three on towards turn four. One of the beneficiaries of all that is Andy Suchek. He finds himself up into fifth position. Juan Cáceres is also a good start. He goes up to fourth. It's Roberto Mejia who leads the way from Felipe Drugovic and Harrison Scott. Alex Fontana, another who suffered in the early incidents. Now here is another look at it. Three wide into turn one. Habsburg just a little tap there from Scott as he came back across another tap from Scott. He spins round and all sorts of contact. Possibly Thiago Vivacqua, one of the drivers who was caught up in that. 
but at the front of the field, no concerns whatsoever for Roberto Mayer. He, he leads from Felipe Drugovic as he tips through turn 10, climbing on uphill. Ferdinand Hasberg has resulted that spin. He's dropped down into ninth position. Roldan Rodriguez also in the wars. And Thiago Vivacqua, as we rather feared. So uh, quite a few drivers hitting trouble early on. Harrison Scott, however, in third place. Andy Suchek, who we watch at the moment, in fourth. He's now got Lucas Dunner behind him in fifth. As Roberto Mayer, he obviously setting the fastest lap of the race on the opening lap of the race as he runs downhill into the braking zone at turn one. Swings through turn two, climbing uphill into the lengthy parabola of turn three. Always a real challenge for the drivers. They have to use the aerodynamic property of the car to very good effect. Into turn four, you can challenge for a move here, but Felipe Drugovic not quite close enough. And this is one of those circuits where the driver's tactical astuteness really comes to the fore, knowing that if you get a good run out of the final corner, you can keep the drive behind you a couple of tenths behind, and likewise through turn nine, then it's very tricky for them to pass elsewhere on the track. Here is the battle between Roldan Rodriguez and Alex Fontana. This the 13th and 14th position, the bright yellow car of Fontana. And a little bit of a challenge further back, and I think that that is David Fuminelli on Yukanamaru. They're chasing Ferdinand Habsburg. And in car with Kanamaru as he sees the rear spoiler of Fuminelli up the road ahead of him. Kanamaru on the brakes, no way through. A little bit of a kick up of the dust from Fuminelli. Oh, and a bit of a moment there from Kanamaru. The car snapping rather under braking. More dust ahead. I think that was Ferdinand Habsburg who possibly put a wheel on the dust. They're chasing Bruno Mendes and Juan Cathred. Cathred in sixth. Mendes in seventh. Oh, no, and more trouble. And a huge incident behind. And Ferdinand Habsburg, part of that. Fuminelli, another bit. There's damage all over the place. And lots of drivers hitting trouble in a very, very big way. Brings others into the mix. Now, was Harrison Scott first and foremost in that? Because Harrison Scott drops to the rear of the field. So race one winner, Harrison Scott, suffering an absolute disaster. Others, minus front wing, hopping over the kerbs. And that is Kanemaru, who's going to find that his car doesn't want to go around corners. Now, here is another look at it. It was Harrison Scott who spun of his own accord. And then as he looked to rejoin into the path of traffic, contact with Habsburg, and then a big whack from Fuminelli. New Kanemaru also in the mix as well as Scott trying to pick his way through. Spins up the rear tyres, looks to rejoin. I think possibly Kanemaru lost his front wing against Habsburg as he spun back across the track. But an absolute disaster then for Harrison Scott, the winner of race one. Dropping right to the rear of the field. So that is going to hurt him substantially in terms of the standings. Indeed, he ducks into the pit lane. So drama then. It means at the front of the field that Mary and Drugovic have now got Andy Suchek as their main chaser. Lucas Dunner up into fourth place. And don't forget, Dunner starts at the very back of the grid. But he has taken the view that crashing is a discretionary activity has avoided so doing and therefore has climbed up the order to very good effect. Now this, a great battle at the start of the fourth lap between Mehi and Drugovic. And Felipe Drugovic now starting to ask all the difficult questions of Roberto Mehi. And this is exactly the sort of racing that we were hoping for. Through turn three they go and out on that short stretch towards turn four. Another look at it then as... Felipe Drugovic in the toe behind Roberto Mehi. Mehi moves to the inside of the road. That's what he has to do. Drugovic tries to zone the dummy. Roberto Mehi not falling for it. And as a result, Felipe Drugovic just has to settle in to that second position. As then the pair of them running nose to tail through turn three. Unlikely to be much joy. So it means as they're halfway around the lap, that it's still as we were. Roberto Mehi about a quarter of a second ahead of Felipe Drugovic. But really exciting racing this. Felipe Drugovic trying to close up under braking to turn 10. 
Again, he's not quite close enough to make the move, but it's now the next sequence of corners, which is going to be absolutely crucial for the Brazilian, because if he can get tucked up, probably within a quarter of a second or thereabouts of Mehi, as they come out of turn 16, then that will give him the chance to get in the toe once more down the start and finish stretch through the flip-flop chicane. And Drugovic just took a bit of a bite out of the curb. Then it means that Mehi has got enough of a buffer. It's closer to half a second rather than a quarter of a second. And as a result, I don't think there's going to be much doing here for Felipe Drugovic. We ride in car with him now. Watching the tail of Roberto Mehi, but he's nowhere near close enough to make the pass on the brakes into turn one. Actually hammers the apex though. But then again, so does Roberto Mehi. A pair of them. Just over a couple of seconds clear of Andy Suchet. Then it's a big gap back to Lucas Dunner. A further five seconds or thereabouts. So fascinating racing this between the two front runners. But as ever, the question at the circuit to Barcelona and Catalonia is where can Felipe Drugovic really prize that opening on Roberto Mehi? The other thing he's got to be aware of, of course, is just not pushing the tyres too hard in that turbulent air behind the car of Mehi, which may cost him late in the race, as it is with just over one-third race distance. So sweeping through turn nine on the brakes then towards turn ten. The rest of the order at the moment relatively stable after all of the uh, incidents that we've had. Harrison Scott into the pits and would appear effectively to be in retirement. Ferdinand Tabsberg, another driver who was on the podium in race one, down in 14th and well out of the action as well. So this is going to be possibly advantage Mehi and Drugovic and Andy Suchek in terms of the series points because they are the front runners who have been consistent thus far. And Andy Suchek then heads out the final corner as Felipe Drugovic sets the fast lap of the race. Now is Drugovic going to be close enough to challenge Mehi this time around as the pair of them Close up under braking once more into turn one. And again, Drugovic is there or thereabouts with Roberto Mehi. He's just not quite able to find an opening, a chink in Mehi, Mehi's armour. So they stay as they were. At the same time for Roberto Mehi, he just can't shake off Felipe Drugovic for the moment. Andy Suchek as yet unable to make too many inroads into them as... Some good battling going on in the midfield. This is the battle for fourth onwards. As, oh, contact. And around, I think that was Bruno Mendes and Tatiana Calderon who got caught up in it. But it is Bruno Mendes who appears to have been the main loser. He has slipped down to ninth and possibly worse. Indeed, down into ninth position for Bruno Mendes as he gets back underway. So disappointment for him means Roldan Rodriguez, who we watch now, has moved into seventh place. And now Thiago Vivacqua all over the tail of Alex Fontana. Vivacqua, the predominantly red car. Fontana, the yellow machine. And they have got the recovering Mendes just in front of them. Also got German Sanchez as well as part of that battle in car then with Alex Fontana. And just as we were saying, things were starting to settle down in the midfield clearly very very lively indeed as Felipe Drugovic once more sets the fastest lap of the race the car of Bruno Mendes moving around all over the place as he tries to make inroads into Guillermo and Sanchez trying to force Sanchez into an error somebody else in the wars now was that Tatiana Calderon I think it could well have been and she drops down into 11th position a couple of drivers being caught out Coming out of the chicane as in car here with Bruno Mendes looking to the move to the inside of Sanchez and he should make that pass into turn one. No retaliatory contact, so he is through and up into seventh place. Next target, Roldan Rodriguez, who's been elevated to sixth after that moment for Tatiana Calderon. The rest of the field all hammering in behind. Great battle this. Alex Fontana and Thiago Vivac were right up behind German Sanchez as they dispute 8th, 9th and 10th. And Vivac were looking to the outside of Alex Fontana. Fontana outbreaks himself, so does Sanchez. Vivac can't quite take advantage. He'd rather position his car to be at the mercy of Fontana if he ran wide. Now, is he going to be able to slide through? Yes, he is. Now, Tiago Vivac in the back of your picture. You can see able to make the move. And Alex Fontana moving up 
into ninth place. It means Bruno Mendes, with whom we ride now, has really got away with making a bit of a jump on the rest of the field. Roldan Rodriguez, another driver who has got a fair bit of ground to play with. He is there in sixth place. He's trying to reel in Juan Catherine, but he's about three seconds or so adrift. There you see the gap, and so that is going to be a fairly big ask, I'd suggest, over the six laps or so remaining in the race. The front of the field, though, Mehi and Drugovic still going at it wheel to wheel. This though, is probably the closest fight on track at the moment between Gervin Sanchez, Thiago Vivacqua and Alex Fontana. In the background, they have got the fast recovering Tatiana Calderon looking to close up onto their tail as well. Here we are in car with Thiago Vivacqua in the tow. He's not going to be quite close enough to challenge, is he? No, he's not. And Vivacqua realises that that's the case and decides to keep his powder dry, not risk a lunge and contact and all the problems that that would bring. And that's always the challenge in these races, is just getting the bands right now. Meanwhile, Lucas Dunner has lost out to Juan Catherhead. So Lucas Dunner drops down into fifth place. Juan Catherhead moves up into fourth. Roldan Rodriguez still lurking there in sixth. And Dunny just looked to be snatching the brakes on occasion. So having had a lively start to the race, staying out of trouble. This fight, by the way, for fourth position is some 15 seconds back from the fight for the lead. Shows the pace that Roberto Mehi and Felipe Drugovic have been setting at the very head of the field. So through we go in the battle for 8th, ninth, and 10th place. Sanchez from Vivacqua and Fontana. No change in the order, but they're still running very, very closely. Now, can they do anything about coming back at Bruno Mendes? Because, of course, the more they fight with each other, the more they slow each other down. And certainly Alex Fontana still looking to find a way past Thiago Vivacqua. Here, meanwhile, is the fight at the front of the field with Roberto Mehi still clear of Felipe Drugovic. And Drugovic is no nearer to Roberto Mehi than when we last saw the pair of them. But likewise, he's no further away either. In the background, they've still got Andy Suchek a couple of seconds adrift, but not really able to make a dent in that advantage. So it is as we were, as Drugovic just runs a little bit wide, kicks up some dust. That may cost him a tenth or two. Meanwhile, here is a replay, Alex Fontana on Thiago Vivacqua. So they head down towards turn one, the bright yellow car of Alex Fontana to the inside of the red machine of Thiago Vivacqua. And that is ninth place once more in the clutches of Fontana. How long for? We're, we will see. It's a great battle between the pair of them. Here, meanwhile, is Roldan Rodriguez, and he's got Bruno Mendes now looming on his tail. And at the same time, Rodriguez is beginning to close up onto the tail of Lucas Dunner as well. So this fight for fifth, sixth, and seventh is beginning to come together really quite nicely. And of that group, it is Mendes in seventh, who is probably the quickest at the moment. So they head into the solidarity lap. And... There is Mendes, the red and white car, closing up onto the predominantly white car. Oh, and a spin, and around goes Lucas Dunner. And that, I make the third spinner coming out of the chicane in the race thus far. And so Lucas Dunner in trouble. He's going to rejoin, but he's way down now into 11th position. Now, here is Ferdinand Habsburg. Habsburg down in 14th place. We've not seen an awful lot of him. He was caught, of course, in early incidents. He will be looking at lap times as much as anything at the moment. But Habsburg, who was very quick in the opening race at Silverstone, quick in the hot laps, but it all got a little bit too close for comfort in the early running. Harrison Scott, race one winner. We have lost altogether. Here is David Fuminelli. Fuminelli, another of the drivers to have been involved in contact in the earliest stage of the race. So currently in 13th position for Fuminelli. As he accelerates through, reels off the lap. But he's some 73 seconds adrift of the lead. He's at 
best part of 15 seconds back from you, Canamaro, in 12th. So for Fuminelli, this will be a case of chalking up the miles, but possibly not an awful lot more. Meanwhile, there has been a change, and it is Bruno Mendes who is ahead of Roldan Rodriguez. So Mendes makes the position as Roberto Mayer. He sets fastest lap of the race. And here is Mehi. And interestingly, the last timing split, nine tenths clear of Felipe Drugovic. That is beginning to open up what starts to feel like enough of a buffer, provided Roberto Mehi doesn't hit trouble. For now, that doesn't seem to be the case. They've still got Andy Suchek there or thereabouts in shot. But then 17 seconds now, their advantage over fourth place driver Juan Catherine. So the podium positions barring something going pretty drastically wrong, seem to be relatively decided between these three drivers. It's now going to be the order in which the podiums decide. Now here may be an explanation as to why Felipe Drukovic should drop back because he forced Mehi to the defensive once more into turn one, got just about alongside, but under braking was Mehi had the racing line. And Felipe Drukovic trying as hard as he could through turn three but unable to make the move on Roberto Mehi. So Mehi still retaining the advantage in car now, heading up towards turn nine, the highest point on the circuit, high speed sweep and then downhill towards the heavy braking zone. As Ferdinand Habsburg now setting the fastest lap of the race. And this is giving a good indication of just the technical challenge of the Circus Barcelona Catalunya from the perspective of Roldan Rodriguez with a combination of high, mid and low speed corners and the drivers really having to get each sequence spot on, driving smoothly, absolutely key there is Felipe Drugovic still chasing Roberto Mejia but they're getting fairly deep into the race now, just two and a half laps to go and so Felipe Drugovic is going to pull off the victory. He's going to have to do it sooner rather than later. But the challenge being when you're behind a driver the entirety of the race, like has been the case here, is that Roberto Mejia can pretty much anticipate everywhere that Felipe Drugovic is going to try and make the move. And that really makes things difficult for Drugovic because he can't catch Mejia by surprise. All he can do is just keep filling his mirrors Keep letting him know that he's right there. This is, I think, Juan Catherine in fourth position. We've not seen an awful lot of him. He's got a hefty advantage over Bruno Mendes. Mendes, having cleared Roldan Rodriguez, has built up a couple of seconds worth of a buffer. No such benefit for Alex Fontana and Thiago Vivacqua. They've been glued together throughout the course of the race. But you can see as they fought with each other, they've got Tatiana Calderon beginning to home in onto their tail as we go in car now with Thiago Vivacqua, looks to chase down Fontana into the braking zone at turn 10. No way through. And Thiago Vivacqua, trying what he can to pick his way past, can't do it. So Alex Fontana retaining that eighth place. They've still got German Sanchez not all that far up the road ahead of them. <clears throat> As the race leaders go in to the penultimate lap, so just two more tours of the circuit. Sweeping down through the final turn along the start and finish straight as the road begins to fall away then towards turn one. Blasting through. Roberto Mejia's lead over Felipe Drugovic. There you can see they head through turn five, just about four tenths of a second. But Felipe Drugovic rapidly running out of time to make the move on Mejia. You just wonder as well if it got really tight, if Roberto Mejia can just eke out another tenth or two if he really needs to. But great fight for the lead in this second Superstars Open race. Through turn 10, then climbing uphill again into this twisty final section. And certainly in the lap's time, Felipe Drugovic, if he's going to make the move for the lead, he will want to have done it by this point on the lap because... It's a section of circuit where passing spots are few and far between. You can possibly do it through the chicane, although you've got to be prepared to take a broken car into account as well. So they swing through the final turn, though. 
Filipe Drugovic certainly isn't going to be quick, close enough to Roberto Mejhi to do it as they head along towards turn one for the final time. And so for Drugovic, if he's going to make the move for victory, it's possibly coming out of turn three to turn four. It's possibly the run down towards turn ten. Because you can see as they went into turn one, he was nowhere near Mehi, And in fact, lost a little bit of ground to Mehi into turn one. Which is not quite as crisp as the race leader in terms of the racing line. And that gives Roberto Mehi the advantage, at least for Drugovic. He has now got almost four seconds worth of a gap over Andy Suchek. And that is going to be more than sufficient, you would suggest, for Drugovic not to worry about anything attacking him from behind. Meanwhile, Juan Cáceres is being caught fairly rapidly in fourth by Bruno Mendes. Whether or not it's going to be enough for the change of position, we will see. I don't think it probably is at the moment. As out of turn nine they go. And on down towards turn ten. Into the braking zone then for the final time for Roberto May. It is going to be a lights to flag victory but that doesn't really tell the story of the race at all for Roberto Mejhi because he has been under sustained pressure throughout the course of proceedings from Felipe Drugovic as they run on downhill then flipping and flopping through the chicane as Roberto Mejhi heads towards the final turn and it is going to be victory in the second of the Superstars Open races for Roberto Mejhi at the circuit to Barcelona Catalunya with second place to Felipe Drugovic, Andy Suchek then completing the podium. And those three emphatically the class of the field with then a long wait for Juan Cathered in fourth place to come through and take the flag. But for Cathered, there he is in fourth, able to withstand the pressure of Bruno Mendes with then Roldan Rodriguez heading the rest of the gang through in sixth place, German Sanchez fending off Alex Fontana and Thiago Vivacqua taking ninth just ahead of Tatiana Calderon. So really entertaining racing from the Superstars Open. A look then at the classification. Roberto Mejhi wins it just under a second clear of Felipe Drugovic with Andy Suchek in third, Juan Cathered in fourth, Bruno Mendes in fifth, Rodan Rodriguez sixth from German Sanchez. Alex Fontana, he and Thiago Vivac having had a great race. So unfortunately we lost Ferdinand Hansberg and Harrison Scott with David Fuminelli, Lucas Dunner and Yu Kanamaru all hitting trouble. So in terms then of the standings, it's Roberto Mehi who comes top in the standings from this race. 37 points to Roberto Mehi with Harrison Scott scoring just a handful of points that by my reckoning should propel Mehi right up in the overall Superstars Open standings. So a thrilling second race at Barcelona and here is a look at the classification after two races. Indeed it does. Roberto Mehi leads the way from Felipe Drugovic and then Harrison Scott tied on 39 points with Andy Suchek. Fernand Habsburg another suffering from a poor second race in fifth of Juan Cáceres. Just one race to go, and that is at the Autodromo di Monza. It promises to be a thrilling conclusion to the Superstars Open. So, Roberto Mejhi, winner of the second Superstars Open race at the Circuit to Catalonia, and you had to work very, very hard for that win. Yeah, I had to work. Uh, Felipe Drugovic was putting a lot of pressure from behind. He was very fast, to be honest. But uh, I knew when he was getting very close, he was losing a little bit of downforce, and then uh, he was struggling a little bit to follow. But uh, but yeah, it was a tight five. I was controlling all the time the the gap between him and me, and I could see that uh, we were pretty similar in general. But uh, but at the end, I made it. Uh, I tried to push a nice laps at the end to make a little bit of gap and to try to breathe. But to be honest, the gap was always within a second, less than a second, then, you know, I, I could not make any mistake. At the beginning of the race, I thought that th this is going to be a very long race. <laughs> but at the end, it was pretty OK. Yeah, in particular, in the middle of the race, he, he was putting a lot of pressure on you. But you always just seemed to, uh, for, the, for the passing points, you always have just that tenth or two in hand to, to maintain the gap. 
Yeah, yeah, it was control. I had the thing, the, the the gap between him and me all the time, and I knew that if I will go out of the last corner, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 in front of him, uh, he was not able to overtake me. And then I, the only thing I did is try to manage that he was not coming under that. I think two laps he came under that. He was 0 0.4, and then it was really tight at the end of the straight. But uh, but I managed uh, to close the door and to don't do any mistake, and I think that was the key to win this race. And what were your impressions of the Delara 320? No, it's pretty good at the moment. Uh, I really enjoy the hot laps we have done, and so far the qualifying it was it has been pretty good. Considering that I downloaded the game yesterday night, <laughs> then I had not so much practice, and this morning I woke up pretty early and I start to practice as much as I could. And then uh, I could do a very nice lap in Silverstone. In Barcelona, I did an okay lap, but uh, I think I was able to improve it a little bit. But then in Monza, I, when I left the track, I was P1, but that, then Danny came at the end and he made a mega lap time. <laughs> I didn't saw that coming. But uh, but yeah, let's see now on the race. I think uh, I think the, the strategy is to finish as front as possible and to try to, to don't make any mistakes. Well, the very best of luck for, for race three and for the series overall. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Welcome to Monza for the third and final race of the Superstars Open. Two races in at Silverstone and Barcelona. It is Roberto Merhi who is leading the points and he scored victory in the second race. Race one winner, Harrison Scott, hitting trouble and that hurting his chances in terms of the overall standings. So disappointing for Scott, a good result for Merhi, but still all to race for at the Cathedral of Speed. Always some of the most exciting races in the Euro Formula Open Championship. And it is Harrison Scott and Roberto Mejia who share the front row, ahead of Ferdinand Habsburg and Bruno Mendes on row two. Row three, David Fuminelli and Felipe Drugovic will, with Andy Suchek and Yu Kanemaru on row four. Then Thiago Vakut from German Sanchez with Juan Cathred and Tatiana Calderon rounding out the sixth row of the grid. Final row, Roldan Rodriguez and Lucas Dunner. So that is how they line up here in Monza. Laps over the preceding couple of days, setting the field. And we should be in for another exciting race, as it's going to be Harrison Scott who will lead them away on the formation lap Roberto Mehi also getting the power down now for Mehi in terms of the point standings what he really needs here is a consistent finish he doesn't need to worry necessarily about winning the race he just needs to stay out of trouble but as we have seen through both of the preceding encounters that is something that is easier said than done as Harrison Scott winds out of the opening chicane on towards the Curva Grande behind a little bit of a tap hopefully not too much of a problem for Tatiana Calderon and Juan Catherine as they came into contact of course Monza a circuit where it's always possible to gain a little bit of time and a little bit of ground through overtaking and quite a lively formation lap this one as Bruno Mendes having a little bit of a sideways moment as well. So the field through the second chicanes on to the first of the Lesmos and the Monza circuit, one of the most picturesque, of course, in global motorsport. Always a, a real treat to visit, winding its way round through the Milanese parkland. Well, the background banner there, just a reminder, of course, that this event all for a good cause raising money for the red cross coronavirus response helping those most in need in this very difficult time of global pandemic and well hopefully you've enjoyed this superstars open show a little bit of light relief in difficult times certainly some very entertaining racing So the field weaving their way along towards the Parabolica. And Harrison Scott pacing the pack.
disappointment, of course, for Scott in race one. Unusual for him to be involved in an instant quite as he was. Seemed to just spin of his own accord. And then as he looked to rejoin, others collected him. And that's really what did the damage to the car that ultimately put him out of the race. And Scott, a double winner in Monza in his championship year. Felipe Drogovic, another driver in the pack who has had great success here at the Monza circuit. So the car's rolling into position. And they will be looking to the lights on the gantry once they're on. And then off we'll be racing a little bit scrappy at the tail of the pack as everybody moves up to their places. Watching for the white car, Lucas Dunn has come into position. Once he is there, then we will be ready to go racing for the third and final time in the Superstars Open, celebrating 20 years of the Euro Formula Open. Here in Monza, everybody in position now as the lights coming on at the top left of your picture. The lights are on, out they go, and away we go. It's a brilliant start from Harrison Scott, who leads the field as they sprint towards the Retifilio for the first time. Behind a little bit of bumping and barging, Thiago Vivacqua right in the thick of that, but it's Scott in the black and silver car. He leads the way from the white and blue car of Roberto Mehi, and then it's David Fuminelli, who is in third, head of Felipe Drugovic and Ferdinand Habsburg as the field sprint through towards the Curva Grande for the first time. Harrison Scott looking to build a bit of a buffer over the rest of the field as Fuminelli right on the tail of Roberto Mehi as the field fan out under braking into the chicane they go oh and it's Mehi who, who takes a trip across the escape route there's a little bit of contact quite a bit of contact in fact and bumping behind I think Lucas Dunn was possibly part of some of that at the front of the field then oh more debris being kicked up in the background it's Scott who leads from Mehi then Fuminelli Felipe Drugovic next along from Ferdinand Hasberg, Andy Suchek, who's got Bruno Mendes tucked up right behind him. Then Lucas Dunn heading the rest of the field in a train of cars, disputing eighth place as they hammer under the bridge on towards the Ascari chicane. Um, Vivacqua possibly got a little bit of a tap there from somebody. He's going to lose out to Yu Kalamaru and others. Lucas Dunner, it would appear, taking a trip across the gravel track. So the second half of the field, all having a little bit of an adventure as David Fuminelli closing up on to the tail of Roberto Mehi as Harrison Scott sweeps through out of the Parabolica and he is going to come through and complete the first lap of the race here in car with David Fuminelli then as he chases Roberto Mehi down towards the Retifilio. and Fuminelli may well be able to go through here and take the position indeed he does slots through head of Mehi Felipe Drugovic then next along in fourth Ferdinand Habsburg in fifth as they accelerate out and along towards the Curva Grande swooping through Roberto Mehi looking to close back onto the tail of Fuminelli riding car with Fuminelli now as Roberto Mehi jinks to the inside and he's going to go through indeed he does back to the forward view of Fuminelli who then looks to fight back immediately heading towards the first of the Lesmos, almost interlocking wheels there with Mehi. Fuminelli wants it. Mehi gives him just enough room, not an inch more. And now they're almost three right, and Fuminelli's going to lose out big time as Habsburg squeezes through. Mehi goes sideways. Oh, everybody slithers about. I don't think there was any contact. So Roberto Mehi drops down to seventh position. Felipe Drugovic goes second. Habsburg in third. Suchek up to fourth. Bruno Mendes right in the mix as Fuminelli and Mehi, who started the move off, they get shuffled down into 6th and 7th position. Somebody else running out a little bit wide, and that was Felipe Drugovic, in fact. So Ferdinand Habsburg goes up into 2nd position as they arrive into the Parabolica for the second time of asking. Suchek darts to the inside of Drugovic as well, who then slots back into position in front of Bruno Mendes, as Harrison Scott crosses the line to start lap three. So the field charging down towards Retifilio. Scott leads the way, of course. Ferdinand Habsburg secure in second, but 
behind for third. All bets are off as Fuminelli trying to squeeze past Andy Suchek. And he's going to lose out maybe to Bruno Mendes. Oh, they make contact and around goes Mendes as he just got tagged there by, in fact, it was Felipe Drugovic. So Drugovic tagging Mendes. Here's another look at it as Drugovic looked to the inside of Andy Suchek. And then Bruno Mendes, he tried to sweep through the interlock wheels. And he has the quick rotation, rejoins, hopefully without too much damage, but a little bit of a way down the order and a fair amount of work to do to close back up to the front runners. So that now releases Felipe Drugovic and Roberto Mehi to work together. They are in fourth and fifth position, respectively. There they are. So Mehi, having been in the wars early on, now a chance to come back as David Fuminelli spins out very wide, coming out of the second Lesmo, and that... Oh, disaster. Thiago Vivacqua, Roldan Rodriguez and Lucas Dunner involved in that alongside David Fuminelli. And that a big, big incident. And I expect those cars picking up quite a lot of damage as well. So great pity, particularly for David Fuminelli, who'd been going strongly after a disastrous run in Catalonia. But he spins across into Vivacqua, who's totally innocent. Lucas Roldan Rodriguez also... And then Lucas Dunner, a completely blocked circuit with nowhere to go. And those four cars, at the very least, way, way down the field. None of that of any concern, though, for this man, the race leader, Harrison Scott, who leads the way. Ferdinand Habsburg in second, having just set the fastest lap of the race as well. As there is third place competitor, Andy Suchek. He's got Drugovic. Mayor, he trying to close up onto his tail. They've then, then got a fair bit of daylight back to Yukanamaru. And already the race, somewhat attritional. German Sanchez, Tatiana Calderon, well down and out the running. David Fuminelli as well, of course, after that incident. As now Roberto Mayer, he looks to the inside. Felipe Drugovic coming into the chicane. See in a moment if he made his way through. This is the battle, meanwhile, between Juan Cathred and Yukanamaru. And it's the car with the white star of Canamaru pursuing that of Juan Cáceres as they dispute 6th and 7th place through the first Lesmo on to the second Lesmo before the blast towards the Ascari chicane. And they have got in the background behind them Bruno Mendes. So a series of battles begin to form up amongst the field but with several cars being effectively eliminated from the running early on, don't quite have the pack racing that uh, perhaps we uh, would have hoped for. Nonetheless, plenty of intrigue to look for, forward to, not least, of course, the ultimate outcome of the Superstars Open points chase as Roberto Mejia has moved through into fourth position. Head of Felipe Drugovic as Harrison Scott sets another fast lap. So we look backwards from Mejia. There is Drugovic chasing him down the start and finish stretch in the toe behind him taking advantage of the slipstream what they will be hoping to do if they can is inch their way up towards Andy Suchek because generally speaking the two cars punching their way through the hole in the air are more effective than one they are currently just a couple of seconds adrift of Suchek there he is indeed so they've got a fair amount of ground to make up en route to that potential third place so it's Harrison Scott who's the race leader, Ferdinand Habsburg in second, both of them, of course, on the podium in Silverstone, but being penalised essentially in the point standings by poor runs in Barcelona. Andy Suchek in third has been very consistent, but it's Roberto Mejia who was victorious in that second race in Barcelona in fourth. He had a good finish in Silverstone as well, and so he came into this race with a hefty points buffer. He has avoided contact in the early stages. He certainly wasn't totally out of trouble but he avoided contact as Harrison Scott is about to put a lap onto Lucas Dunner. Dunner of course innocent in that huge instant in the second Lesmo a few moments ago and Harrison Scott about to head into the sixth lap of the race. There is Ferdinand Hasberg in second position and he has got Andy Suchek beginning to ease up to his tail. So this is Far from done and dusted in the battle for second position as Habsburg fully on the power through the parabolica. The revs rising as he 
accelerates through across the line to complete his fifth lap. Suchek about 1.6 seconds back from him. And then we have got the Mehi and Drugovic train just behind as well. You can see them running absolutely nose to tail. Habsburg on the brakes, picks his way through the chicane. And for now, Felipe Drugovic content to ride in behind Roberto Mehi because they'll both know that if they start dicing with each other at this point, any chance of catching up to the third place Garavanti Suchek is going to disappear. What they need to do is set some consistently quick lap times, use the slipstream effect to their advantage, and that will hopefully bring them up to Suchek, who we watch now as he jinks through the second of the chicanes. The driver's all the course in the Dallara 320, the new 4 2020 Dallara, which is their fastest and lightest ever Formula 3 car, although it, you'll notice it's not called the F320, but it's for Formula 3 level, Euro Formula Open, and car that through winter testing and testing last year was getting great feedback from the drivers. We can't wait to see it racing in real life a little bit later on this summer, but for now, enjoying the action provided by the Lara 320 here in Monza in the Superstars Open as Mehi and Drugovic jink out of the Ascari chicane and on that blast along the back essentially of the paddock area towards the Parabolica full throttle from Roberto Mehi, Felipe Drugovic riding behind him then they've got a bit of a gap back to Juan Cathred and Yu Kanemaru, Bruno Mendes is his eighth, Rodan Rodriguez is ninth and Lucas Dunner currently completing the top 10 he's just going to lap down to race leader Harrison Scott Ferdinand Habsburg setting the fastest lap of the race on that occasion but he's still only about 1.6 seconds clear of Andy Suchek so that gap is remaining stable and it's coming down to fractions of a second which is we would rather have expected Ferdinand Habsburg of course involved in that utterly thrilling race here in Monza a couple of years ago with Leonardo Porcini, the closing stages of which saw them going wheel to wheel they somehow avoided pitching themselves into retirement but it was really robust aggressive dicing and it's very very best Habsburg not having to call on those skills just at the moment but he may if Suchek is able to inch up onto his tail what may give Andy Suchek the hurry up here is the progress of Roberto Mehi and Felipe Drugovic Drugovic Another driver, great success here at Monza in his Euro Formula Open career. And there's somebody struggling. That's Lucas Dunner, unfortunately. And Dunner moving aside, letting the front runners through. Mehi a little bit wide through Ascari on that occasion. And on the exit, not sure it's going to open up an awful lot of an opportunity for the Pedro Gavich. As Kasweth and Kanemaru close on to the tail of Lucas Dunner and a bit of a gap back to Bruno Mendes as well all the while the race leader Harrison Scott reeling off the laps at really quite some pace on to the eighth lap of the race already approaching two-thirds race distance field power through along the pit straight Bruno Mendes setting the fastest lap of the race on that occasion so Mendes going strongly but he's 19 seconds off the race leader Harrison Scott but I think more crucially he's about four seconds adrift of Yu Kanemaru which is quite the gap to try and bridge here is the race leader Scott turning into the first of the Lesmos then the blast on towards the second Lesmo he can use the camber to great effect gets on the power nice and early Heads towards Ascari's lead over Ferdinand Habsburg out to 5.4 seconds. Andy Suchek just beginning to drift back a little bit from Habsburg at the moment. But Harrison Scott, but for that spin in the second race in Barcelona, would have really been in the hunt to claim the Superstars Open crown. As it is, he's, he will have to rely, I fear, on misfortune befalling both Mehi and Suchek really to uh, to take the crown. Drukovic also another driver who would need to fight full behind by the wayside as Andy Suchek navigates the parabolica 
still is a teeny bit wide. I don't think it's going to cause him too much of a concern as across the line goes Scott once more into the solidarity lap as there are points available, of course, for the solidarity lap. Although, Paris and Scott, will it be enough to bridge the gap? Possibly not, would be my uh, suggestion as he heads through the Curva Grande. Eight. No slower cars to particularly worry about. Either the next car that he would catch is Roldan Rodriguez, but Roldan is probably about 15 seconds or so up the road ahead of him. Here is Habsburg in the background, Suchek. That gap was opened out a little bit over the past couple of laps. And Ferdinand Habsburg not having any trouble through the chicane. In the background, meanwhile, Drugovic and Mehi, they've swapped places. So Felipe Drugovic up into fourth. Roberto Mehi dips back into fifth position. Sandy Suchek kicks up just a little bit of dust. A bit of dust as well from Felipe Drugovic coming through the first Lesmo. And indeed, the second Lesmo as well. So, interesting battle this one for fourth and fifth. But they're not really closing up that much, if at all, on Andy Suchek. So, they may have to rely on Suchek hitting trouble. If they're to challenge for the final spot on the rostrum. So along the back stretch they come once more. Is Mehi going to look for the move on Felipe Drugovic this time around? Doesn't seem like he's close enough or particularly inclined to have a look. So he just files in behind. A little bit of a slide heading into the Parabolica. That may only cost him a tenth of a second or thereabouts. As Harrison Scott is through and gone on to that ten of the race. His lead over Ferdinand has been growing over that last lap. But Habsburg's advantage over Andy Suchek coming down a little bit, it would seem, to 1.2 seconds. Here is then Harrison Scott. And he is out in isolation at the front of the field. Socially distant from the rest of the field in 2020 parlance. Seven and a half seconds his lead over Ferdinand Habsburg, who has Andy Suchek now breathing down his neck if our timing column is correct as Wayne Cath now here is a look meanwhile Felipe Drugovic and Roberto Mehi going side by side into the chicane snatch the break from Felipe Drugovic Roberto Mehi looking to fight back then into the first Lesmo anyway through for Mehi don't see the case. Now, here is the fight for second position. Now, he said that Suchek was close to Ferdinand Habsburg, and so he is. And Andy Suchek looking to challenge Habsburg as they head into the Ascari. And Habsburg just closes the door in time. But Andy Suchek right with Habsburg as they blast out towards the Parabolica. Now, where the passing is most likely to be done is on the run towards Turn 1. So, for now, they separate by just, what, one and a half car lengths? No more than that. And Suchek closing up under the rear spoiler of Habsburg as they turn through the Parabolica. I didn't see what has slowed Habsburg, but he has dropped about one and a half seconds further adrift of Harrison Scott in the last lap or so. Now, into the penultimate lap of the race, Inco with Andy Suchek as we head along the starting grid towards the chicane. Closing on to Habsburg. Is he going to duck out and go for the move? He thinks about it. He sticks right in behind Ferdinand Habsburg, though. Rides the curbs, avoids the elevation, squirts onto the throttle again, heading towards the Curve Grande. But what, of course, they've got to do is both these drivers will be aware there's only a lap and a bit to go. The time for playing cat and mouse is over, and Suchek will know he's got probably to make one decisive move on Habsburg and then try and break free. And here he goes. He looks inside the chicane, and they make contact. Oh, more contact. And Habsburg and Suchek take themselves off into the gravel trap. Disaster. For the drivers battling for second and third, it promotes Felipe Drugovic to second. Roberto Mehi into third. And one unfortunate coming together between Andy Suchek and Ferdinand Habsburg. Suchek may have rejoined. Habsburg looked as if he was fairly beached. So that is points for Mehi. And with just over a lap to go, gives him one hand on the Superstars Open title. Now, here's another look at it. Suchek went for the move. Habsburg across the sausage curve. Lost grip was interlocked with Suchek. And into the gravel they went. Both drivers trying to re-emerge. 
a bit of afters as well and a great pity the end of what was shaping up to be a superb tussle so into the parabolica go Drugovic and Mehi as Harrison Scott already into the last lap of the race so this is last along towards the chicane for Roberto Mehi now he may well have done the maths himself and worked out that he stays where he is he has got the superstars open title so does he need to do that chasing Felipe Drugovic I would suggest probably not but he snatches a break nonetheless as that gives Drugovic a little bit of an advantage as the pair of them head in to Curva Grande on towards the second chicane as a result of that instant Yukanamaru elevated up into fourth Andy Suchek rejoining in fifth Bruno Mendes in sixth Juan Cáceres in seventh Ferdinand Habsburg to eighth ahead of Roald and Rodriguez and Lucas Dunn who's also been in the wars earlier on Thiago Vivacqua, David Fuminelli, Kerman Sanchez and Tatiana Calderon all hitting trouble in the early stage of the race but the driver has not hit any difficulties whatsoever is Harrison Scott he made the perfect start to the race and thereafter has just romped off into the distance and this is going to be over 12 laps, a very substantial victory for Harrison Scott. He's already 12 seconds clear over the rest of the field. He's just got the Parabolica to go. Probably shouldn't have claimed the victory just yet in case it all goes wrong. But he doesn't seem to have hit any problems on the way in. He can get the power down on the way out. And Harrison Scott accelerates through to take his second victory in three races in the Superstars Open. Harrison Scott victorious in Monza. Superb drive from him. As across the line in second position is Felipe Drugovic and third place to Roberto Mejia is enough to give him the Superstars Open crown. Superbly consistent performance across the three races from Mejia. So he takes the title as Yu Kanamaru finishes in fourth ahead of Bruno Mendes in fifth position. And the rest of the field coming through across the line. Bruno Mendes there. So have a look at the results then. Harrison Scott taking the victory from Felipe Drugovic. Roberto Mehi in third with Yukanamaro fourth. Bruno Mendes fifth. Juan Cáceres in sixth. Head of Roldan Rodriguez. Andy Suchek, Lucas Dunner, Ferdinand Habsburg and Thiago Vivacqua, David Fuminelli all hitting trouble. German Sanchez and Tatiana Calderon. Light rise, slightly attritional in Monza, but very entertaining nonetheless. So in terms of the points from that, it's Harrison Scott from Felipe Drugovic, Roberto May, and then Yu Kanamaru. Others picking up points, but uh, including Daniel Kadea from the hot laps. But in terms of the final standings, then... It is Roberto Mehi, just a single point clear in the event from Harrison Scott with Felipe Drugovic in third, Andy Suchek in the standings, Bruno Mendes in fifth, consistent from Ferdinand Habsburg. So really, really entertaining action in the Superstars Open. And Roberto Mehi deserving across the three races to take it, although Harrison Scott winning two of them. Uh, so, our uh, inaugural Superstars Open champion, Roberto Mehi, and uh, you weren't in the hunt for the victory in Monza, but it was a very close race for you. Yeah, it was indeed. It was a really close race. At the beginning, I was a P2, then I had a fight, I think, with Fumanelli during the first lap. And then uh, I think I had a touch with somebody in Les Mochu, then I had a bit of damage on the car. And I was struggling a little bit to keep the pace. That's why I was maybe not catching the Asbur and Solfek uh, from the first part of the race. I was struggling, but then uh, I took on the radio with uh, Drugovic and then we we collaborate together to try to catch them, but it uh, looked like it was pretty difficult to catch them. And then uh, at the end, they make a crash and then we take the benefit of it. But yeah, it was a close race, really nice fights, especially with uh, Felipe Drugovic. He was really clean racing against me and I think we we had quite a lot of fun. 
and then the important thing was to to make some money for the for the Cruz Roja Spanish to collaborate with this uh, causa, and uh, and it was good to see so many good drivers here, uh, friends from the old times. You know, it was a good mix together, and and we had quite a lot of fun. Well, I make it. I think you last won in the, the what became the Euro Formula Open back in two thousand and eight. So uh, so quite a gap between the series. Yeah, yeah, I race uh, with that livery actually with that car uh, in the last race in I think it was November in Barcelona. Uh, I had my experience there with the Team Tech Auto, won the races, and then back now again with that car and I won again. <laughs> then it's a fast car for sure. <laughs> uh, well, excellent. What does the rest of 2020 hold for you uh, once you can get back on track? At the moment, I am working with a Formula One team doing all the development work on the simulator, uh, and that takes me a lot of days. And then we are also looking for the program of doing some LMP prototypes, WEC, Le Mans, or LMS for the for the year. We need to see how it's going to be the calendar and and how we can mix it together, you know, because uh, my first job is to do the simulator role that I am doing in the Formula One team. And then I can put some races around that, you know, and then at the moment it's not very clear uh, the calendar and I need to know the calendar as soon as possible to try to to see what I can put around it. Well, I hope all the plans come together for you. And once again, congratulations on being our inaugural Superstars Open champion. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.